Hello, I'm Bob the Booker and welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel. Um, today I wanted to just go through the books that I have read this week. Um, and I think, if I'm right, this is also the last video I'll be filming in this flat um, of my friend, because he's very selfishly coming back from holiday and <laughs> moving back into his flat. I know, what is this? Um, anyway, uh, so here are the books that I have read uh, this last week. And so starting off, um, I read Amy Jeff's uh, Storyland, um, which is essentially a set of myths and fairy tales in some ways, um, with her own kind of commentary on it, looking at these sort of myths and fairy tales of uh, of the UK and particularly sort of um, sort of England and a bit of Wales and Scotland. Um, and so these are sort of you know some of these sort of founding tales and myths um, around around the country. So things about how certain places came to be or certain people came to be there um so you know it's full of sort of giants and uh, you kind know, of mythical creatures but also then you know just kings and princes and all those sorts of things as well so um a really fun and very beautiful collection um i wish that i still had the copy here with me unfortunately i had to give it back to the library but um it's full of these sort of uh, like, almost like woodcut um, drawings and sort of diagrams and pictures for, for so many bits in it and it's just a glorious glorious book it was so beautiful um, I'm a bit of a sucker for myths and fairy tales anyway um, and I think this book particularly was just so so sort of charming in the way that it just looks at um, these these tales and how how a nation goes about building itself and telling the story of who it is and um, so I thought it was very very nice indeed Next up, um, I read uh, Lisa Allen Agostini's uh, The Bread the Devil Need, um, which I have done a separate video on, uh, but it, is, it has been shortlisted for the Women's Prize this year. Um, and it is a tale of um, a woman in Trinidad and sort of told in a Trinidadian dialect, um, a sort of uh, going through her life as she basically navigates being in uh, an abusive relationship. Um, so not an easy read by any means anyway, just by the subject matter, never mind because there are some quite graphic and detailed scenes of abuse. Um, so really not an easy book to read in that sense and absolutely understand if it's a book that people want to read but feel like they're probably not in the headspace to be able to read. Um, but really interestingly done, nonetheless, really sensitively handled, I think. Um, and what really complicates so much in the book is that the man um, who our main character, Alethea, is in uh, this abusive relationship with, this man, Leo, um, he is also sort of a famous singer um, or sort of a famous musician of some form. And so as a result, there's this sort of public versus private persona, right? That sort of publicly he's well loved, privately, he is this sort of monster um, and, and uh, the book also goes a lot into a lot of her family story and what might have led to her potentially, you know, being uh, less likely to immediately try to avoid a situation like this. Um, I guess, I'm trying to think of a good way of phrasing it, but essentially the book sort of foregrounds that there might be some, some sort of context for her and her family and abuse and therefore that she um, is maybe less adept at sort of spotting the signs of it um, when it comes up with, with this man. Um, but a really interesting book nonetheless, and I think um, a really good addition to the shortlist. I think it's just a, these are the kinds of stories that don't often get told in quite this way, and it's sort of quite powerful, I think, to have that, that narrative out there as well. On a lighter note, um, I then read um, Mona by Paula Olishairak, um, which I'm hoping I'm pronouncing correctly. I've sort of <laughs> tried asking people because I, I looked at loads of interviews of people introducing her online to see if I could kind of catch how they were saying her name. And they all just said, Paula, hello, great to speak to you. And I'm like, say her surname. <laughs> um, and it was translated by Adam Morris um, from, uh, from, I believe from the Spanish. Um, she is an Argentine uh, writer. And um, this book features a character who uh, is, basically she's a writer. She is um, awarded or kind of, she's a finalist for a big literary prize. Um, that's sort of meant to be almost similar to the Nobel, but 
different, uh, but the, the kind of the key difference seems to be that part of the prize is bringing together all of these authors on basically like, like a little week together where they all sort of celebrate and give give readings and speeches and things before the the announcement is made and so we're basically introduced to this whole cast of quite eccentric writers who are all held up as the sort of you know these preeminent writers in their countries and they're all sort of brought together many of whom have these really big egos um many of them are just very eccentric and bizarre um, and watching all of these writers sort of squabble amongst themselves is really quite fun. And I think this is what is so glorious about this book, is it's just this sort of really almost acidic, acerbic um, kind of takedown of these characters with big egos. We've got, you know, our, our protagonist, Mona, we are watching her as she sort of just lances these characters completely. You know, they these people with big egos walking in being like, yes, yes, I'm this sort of author. And, you know, we get her aside saying that she thinks they're a bit, uh, you know, they're a bit of an idiot, <laughs> like, sort of laying into them. And it's very satisfying. It's um, almost camp as a book because of how it uh, approaches some of these things. Um, and there's a really, there's such a fantastic eye that this book has of sort of the way it observes characters. It's almost a bit Muriel Spark in that sense of this sort of very cutting, um, clever observation but underneath this book is also something quite clever that there is a discussion about this main character and the various things that she's going through personally outside of her writing career there's you know all these things about not only representing your country and what that can look like or mean but also that she is suffering from a, a good amount of trauma and difficulties around her mental health and that plays into how she starts to grasp reality um, which given that there's all this, you know, this pomp and circumstance around the literary elite is so funny to then have um, that taken down. But then there's also this very dark thing of, of just how she processes everything else that's going on in her lives. You know, you're, you're sat on stage and an important call comes through. What do you do? Um, and all these sorts of things. So um, really interesting book. Um, one that I'd heard a few people rave about, but, um, I just, I must admit, I was sort of lured in by the cover, you know, that kind of classic, you know, don't judge a book by its cover. Like, actually, in this case, this cover is gorgeous. <laughs> and I really want to read it. Um, and it, it is entirely up my, up my street. So, yeah, I really very heartily recommend this one. The next book I had quite a complicated relationship with, and that is The Men by Sandra Newman. Um, I read and adored um, her last book, The Heavens. Um, I read it as part of a bookshop, book club. Um, and really enjoyed the the sheer scope and ambition of the book um, that is and the the writing style and the pace and so so much about it. I thought it had a lot to say and was really powerful. So I was very excited for the men, but I really struggled with this one. And there are sort of a few reasons why. I, I I tried largely not reading reviews of it before I did, but I've sort of read a few since, and they've I think confirmed some of what I was what I felt a bit strange about within the book. Essentially, long story short, the premise of this book is that overnight everybody with a Y chromosome disappears and is basically sort of raptured out um, of the world. And obviously this naturally straight away leads to friends and family trying to work out what on earth has happened, track them down and, and mourn the loss of their families um, and their loved ones once they realise what's happened. And at the heart of it, I think that's a really great um, premise for um, a book, at least in terms of just the the emotional angle of that, um, exploring um, exp exploring a kind of female dystopia, a kind of um, or apocalyptic kind of book. And Sandra Newman's recently written an article about that self same thing. Um, and there's been you know quite a, a drive recently, and you know quite a, a lot of books coming out that have sort of dealt with women and dystopia in really fascinating ways. However, I had quite a few issues with the men. Um, and I think a large part of it is almost that same thing that I loved about The Heavens, which is the scope of this book. Um, I think too much is happening in quite, in a relatively short space of time. And whereas somehow in The Heavens that bound together, was sort of bound together because so much of the book was about being confused and, and a loss of reality. In this book, it just felt like quite weird world building for me because it felt at times like I was really invested in 
certain moments of a character's thoughts and then we switch to somewhere else and we just it felt like we were constantly moving around in a way that was just quite isolating like I, I felt like all the things I was finding really interesting I kept on being dragged away from by the book so you know we would sort of go into these old relationships between characters which were sort of interesting but felt like they were introduced quite late in the book for me so you know and a previous relationship I felt like there's almost more where that could have been like drip fed through the book instead of sort of a here is a big info dump half the way through the book that now suddenly seems to be doing this thing so that's part of my issue I think with the book and it's frustrating because I really enjoyed the writing overall but but that world building element felt really tricky for me particularly when it comes to what that means for the discussions around gender in this book because I think one of the things that's really powerful is the way that it articulates something that many women say quite regularly, which is this idea of if they didn't have to constantly look over their shoulders, uh, you know, when they're walking home at night and it's dark or um, when they are when they have headphones in or when it's, you know, when anything's happening, you know, women and their safety, you know, women have quite a complicated relationship, I think, with safety because of just how so much of the world can be deeply, deeply unsafe for them. And I think the book, did a really great job of talking about those things really powerfully but I think it was very then it, it felt quite strange in the way it then approached so many other aspects of of life that you know suddenly this idea that we might have a world that is only people without a Y chromosome sounds at first like it would be this really interesting uh, exploration of sort of what what does it look like when you rebuild society however I found the f the way that this book then didn't really build what that might look like for people who aren't necessarily cisgendered then felt quite complicated because obviously in the midst of um of of everybody with a y chromosome disappearing that is for the most part largely going to be um sort of cisgendered men um who disappear uh, but trans characters were sort of dealt with quite strangely in the book I thought there were sort of brief allusions to the fact that they existed and that they sort of sat in quite a weird place so there's a trans male character a trans man who um because basically you know he is there and is now one of the only men left uh, by dint of his chromosomes he is attacked by sort of by sets of women and I thought there were lots of almost missed opportunities for a really interesting dissection on what that might actually look like. Instead it was sort of, these characters are over there, whereas I think it wouldn't have been particularly uh, difficult in this book to bring a trans character to the fore and have them as one of the narrators of this book. Because this book had quite a few different people who we were focused on. And so I don't think it would have been inconceivable to have a trans man now moving through the world as one of the only men. Um, I think that could have been a really fascinating discussion. But I think what then did feel quite tricky about this book for me, as, as uh, alongside that, was that it then felt like it, it, it sort of just started falling apart a bit towards the end, that what felt like quite a propulsive and dynamic beginning, for me by the end of the book I was just a bit a bit lost, it just felt a bit scattergunned, uh, scattergun um, at times it felt a bit um, like I don't know it sort of was losing its way a bit it was sort of just a bit ranty by that point almost or just a bit kind of it sort of forgotten that we were building a world or that people had any sorrow or sense of loss for people who had disappeared and it sort of people very quickly moved on and then I think at the end and I, I don't want to spoil anything but I know that a few reviews and this is something I very strongly agree with th I think this book sort of bungles its ending I I think it any of the sort of faith and um, uh, sort of trust that the author, that the reader has placed in the, the author going through to this part of the end of the book is sort of lost in the final few pages of just how it approaches the end. And that really left a bit of a sour taste in my mouth, especially for a book that I think had so much promise to really delve into some issues quite powerfully. Um, and also given the sort of dynamism of her writing, it really frustrated me to get to that stage and, and have that happen. And uh, last but not least, I read Bola by Pajtim Satov, uh, Satovci, uh, translated by David Haxton. Um, and this is a book that I just uh, thought was beautiful and really well handled. Um, it covers 
um, a set of characters in Kosovo or in and around Kosovo, there's sort of various other parts um, during its sort of historical troubles and, and sort of we get moments sort of in sort of a bit earlier, but sort of a lot of moments of this book are focused around the early 2000s. And there's something so interesting about this way, the way this book handles those historical aspects of trauma um, and particularly the distrust that's sown between countries that previously, you know, may have had a bit more of a sense of brotherhood with each other and how that is sort of reconciled with characters who are gay um, sitting in amongst that. So, for example, this sort of relationship between two men that's mostly at the heart of it, uh, of this book, is naturally made quite difficult by everything else going on around them because not only is there an expectation of him to, of this, you know, our sort of central character to have a wife because that's the expected thing to do, but now actually him having a wife is also part of the security um, that would come with moving to a new place and, you know, not sticking out like a sore thumb. And so suddenly there's this real sense that his sexuality is an, is an additional problem in his life and something that can be used, for example, to blackmail him, or is something that can be used to um, to sort of problematize his existence in some way. And even we get these passages where we see children at school, and particularly, you know, this idea of, um, well, you might do that in Kosovo, but actually here, this is how we behave in a school classroom. And these, these sort of weird tensions um, between people who probably on a on a general level would have no issue with each other but there's almost this sort of state apparatus above them that says well you are Albanian you are Serbian you are Kosovan therefore you are blah 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 um, and that causes a great number of issues and, and makes some really quite heartbreaking moments happen in this book because there are almost no other ways that these characters can interact they're kind of caught up in the system. They are outsiders and then sometimes outsiders again because of their sexuality. Um, and I think this book handles that so beautifully. It's really touching just how this book examines um, what it might like be like to be queer in the middle of a war zone or in the middle of a, a set of conflicts between nations or... or having to being both queer and someone migrating to another place all of these factors kind of coming in and, and really making these these lives quite difficult for characters and i just thought it was a beautiful beautiful book um and so so tender but also just so full of these absolutely heartless heartbreaking moments um that i just found really quite effective um so yeah just a just you know a nice light set of books this this month. I'm, I'm quite <laughs> quite grateful for Mona and Storyland for <laughs> adding a bit of joy to what was otherwise three books that are, the other three books which are largely around trauma and death and destruction. <laughs> um, anyway, so that, that's what I've read this week. I'd really love to hear your thoughts if you've read any of them um, and or if you've uh, read anything else by, by these the same authors or, or anything similar. Um, I've been Bob. Take care and speak to you all soon. Bye-bye.